Welcome to Faith That Works, exploring the changed lives of those living by faith. Your host, Bob McHouston, will spotlight ordinary people who have discovered for themselves a faith that works. Thank you and welcome. Thank you, Donnie. Uh, Donnie Smith is on our camera over here and uh, letting us know when to start and stop and all that. And so I, I appreciate Donnie and Ann and uh, Bob and John, my son, in the control room and Jeff and all these folks that, that volunteer their time to come and, and, and make these programs possible because I don't know how to do any of that stuff. I mean, I don't even know how to turn it on, much less operate. All I know to do is talk. And that's what we're going to do tonight. We're talking with uh, Rob Gardner tonight. Um, Rob uh, is going to share with us how Jesus changed his life. Jesus is a life changer. He's not a religion. He is a living person. He's God in flesh, was God in flesh. <clears throat> now he lives in me, and he lives in Rob. Uh, and I pray that he lives in you. Listen. Can Jesus live in you and not change your life? The Bible says that, uh, that the mystery of the gospel is Christ in you. Can the living Christ come live in you and you not know it? Oh, folks, listen. We're talking about a resurrected Christ that has come to save people from their sins, to change people's lives, to give them a life worth living here and a life in heaven later. Amen. What a, what a deal. Amen. Rob, thanks for coming. Thanks for uh, allowing us to have this time with you. And we're just going to enjoy getting to know, getting to, getting to know each other. Um, somewhere through the past years, I've, I've met you. But tell us what's, uh, a little bit about yourself. I think you said you grew up in this area and in the south. And did you grow up in a typical Bible Belt home? Or what's, what's your background like? I grew up in Tupelo. Um, born in 55, uh, was raised in church, um, had, came from a, a um, uh, my mother was Baptist, my dad was Methodist, um, I just um, uh, grew up and going to church, knowing who God was, knowing mm -hmm. who Jesus was, mm -hmm. but, um, and believe it in your mind, I would assume, yes, yeah. I, I, but it was, um, I hadn't accepted him as my savior mm -hmm. all those years uh, Methodist Church grew up in the Methodist Church and uh, uh, of course we're uh, christened or, or uh, introduced to the church when we're, we're infants mm -hmm. and then uh, sixth grade we have a confirmation class mm -hmm. and I went through that confirmation class and I, I really mm -hmm. didn't know what this Jesus and and saved is not a big word that that's used uh, uh, was used in mm -hmm. the church that I grew up in and I didn't understand, and, and um, I went through most of my life not knowing mm -hmm. that there was something else I needed to do, like give my life to Christ. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm a new Christian. I'm uh, three years. Oh, uh, you really? Uh, it'll be, uh, uh, it'll actually be uh, three years this July. Wow. Uh, July, the, uh, uh, July the 1st, 2007. I dropped to my knees by my bed and asked Jesus to come into my life. What did God use to bring you to that point, Rob? H had you been active in church or semi-active? or did you just Off and on, yeah. uh, Bob. It was like um, uh, some years I would go a good bit and some years mm -hmm. uh, I would, uh, I might go Easter and Christmas, mm -hmm. um, anything special. Uh, um, my mother and my wife and uh, made sure my kids sort of came up and, and went to church mm -hmm. over the years. And you knew it was the right thing and the good thing to yeah, do. Yeah, I knew it was. I knew it was right. Mm -hmm. I knew it was good. I just didn't mm -hmm. know all I needed to mm -hmm. know, and I'm still learning. Uh, God's just displaying Himself to me mm -hmm. daily, and uh, I just, um, as they say, I, I'm just a work in progress because. I'm 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 open to whatever he wants to do with me. Yeah, amen. Do it, you know, and all for his glory. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes we get uh, caught up in prideful things, and and uh, uh, I don't want to ever be.
picked out and said, he's prideful. Mm -hmm. I, d I want mm -hmm. all the glory to go to Christ. Mm -hmm. um, well, what's going on that brought you back to this, brought you to this, to this point of this? Mainly a lot of alcohol. Um, let me re regress a yes, little bit. Yes, um, I started drinking, slipping around. Uh, social drinking was big. My parents uh, social drank. I'd slip around at age 13 mm -hmm. and uh, get a slip of beer, whatever. Mm -hmm. And I started drinking, and um, it wasn't necessarily frowned upon uh, in the culture that I was growing up mm -hmm. in. And um, so um, by the time I got to drinking age, I'd been drinking for five or six years. And um, so it became a part of my life. I spent 31 years as a professional um, uh, in a local uh, company here in town. I never went to work drunk, but as soon as I got off work, I started drinking. Hmm. I would drink, eat lunch. Um, uh, I worked an early shift and was off around lunch most of my career. I would uh, I'd throw back a few beers and eat lunch, take a nap, get up, and then I'd pull out the the bourbon, mm -hmm. and, uh, and I was a prisoner in my own house simply because um, of my addiction to alcohol. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't let myself drink and drive. I knew better than that. I had some, my parents put some good moral values mm -hmm. in me as far as uh, uh, that kind of stuff goes. But Let me interject okay. something. I'm reading a book. Okay. Uh, dealing with addictions, and this book keeps talking about we're we become we're voluntary prisoners. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, okay. we're 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 voluntary slaves. Uh, it's not something that we didn't agree to do. Right. We voluntarily. We just did. jumped right in there. Yeah, and so you became a, a slave. A I prisoner was. in your own home. I was. I was. I spent how many every years? Um, you know, back back in the college days, did did my share of drugs and and um, uh, mostly social drugs, mostly marijuana. Mm -hmm. uh, experimented with cocaine and and uh, speed and and barbiturates, mm -hmm. and, uh, but mainly mainly alcohol and marijuana mm -hmm. over a period of time, and then. After the, uh, I guess, more nervous about getting caught, going to jail mm -hmm. with the drug stuff, I ended up leaving that and going into marijuana. I became an early dad at 21 years old. Uh, I've got a son, 33. I've been married 33 years to the same woman. Mm. Um, You're getting to be a rare breed. I, it is. Yeah. We, you know, we. <laughs> it's it's uh, it's one of the stable things in my life. And your wife stayed with you all she through did. all that stuff. She did. Now, I took her down that road with me, mm -hmm. too. Um, we both drank too much. Mm -hmm. She didn't have the problem that I had. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm thankful for that. Mm -hmm. But uh, I, God just, um, I thank my daughter um, from the mouths of babes. Mm -hmm. um, she she lived her life all these years for Christ. She was a miracle child. God's worked so many miracles in my life. Mm -hmm. How I could turn my back on him for all those years, mm -hmm. I don't know. I, I just Did don't. Did you recognize that beforehand, or what, you didn't really see it or recognize it until three years ago? <sighs> yeah, I, I did recognize it, but mm -hmm. I didn't really know how to change the way I was going. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that Christ... Just letting him in would change my life mm -hmm. totally. Mm -hmm. And uh, everybody around me now goes, what has happened to him? Mm. That That's surely not Rob Gardner. And uh, I have to say, I've got Jesus. You know, they're right. It's